We've just seen the price for the Fiat 500e, the electric version of the Fiat 500. It's a real cool, funky looking car. However, it is twice the price of the gasoline version, literally double. I'm not even exaggerating. Almost to the cent, it's double the price. Amazingly, it's still quite popular in some countries, but I believe that, that will be short lived. The question here is though, why is it so expensive? I mean, there's other car manufacturers who are able to make EVs that aren't double the price of their gasoline versions. Why is it that the Fiat 500e costs twice as much to buy in its electric version? Well, there is actually a reason. It might not be what you think. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers and welcome back everyone else. Thank you for tuning in. Now, there's a recent report. It said this and the media jumped on this like it was like Christmas. They thought it was Christmas. Told you so. EVs are terrible. We told you it's not going to work. Electric cars cost 40% more to manufacturer than petrol vehicles. Hmm. Was this report true? Well, I mean, drive.com.au here in Australia reported on this. So did many other global mainstream publications who claim that they're objective, they're legitimate, and they have only logical, reasonable, intelligent things to say. Well, we all know that's far from the truth. They say the rising cost of the precious minerals that go into electric car battery packs are driving up prices, creating yet another speed bump on the road to price parity with petrol vehicles or gasoline vehicles. Now, firstly, I want to point out a little fact. Tesla's profits right now are insane. Strange that, isn't it? They make eight times more money per car sold than Toyota. Strange that, isn't it? Apparently, BYD made 10 times as much profit in Q4 of 2022 versus Q4 of 2021. So why do they make 10 times as much profit? Why are Tesla's profits skyrocketing when, well, Fiat's are not? Or at least Stellantis claims they cost 40% more to make an EV. And they're not the only ones. There are other car manufacturers saying similar things. Well, the report says that rising production costs continue to act as a roadblock to price parity between petrol and electric vehicles, or gas and electric vehicles. Now, one car giant has put a figure on the gap. Now, I've got to warn you, Stellantis have been a naysayer. They've been moaning, whining, and complaining about EVs for a long time now. Now, don't get me wrong, they do sell them, which is a good thing. They're doing a lot better than Toyota is in that respect. But it's also true that their CEO, Carlos Tavares, just complains constantly about how they're going to cause societal problems, about how while EVs are good, they're not really the future. They're too expensive to manufacture, etc., etc. Carlos Tavares, who is the CEO of Stellantis, and that group includes Jeep, Ram, Alfa Romeo, Chrysler, Citroen, Opel, and Peugeot, says the technology is 40% more expensive. Basically, it says it costs 40% more to make an EV, and that's why your Fiat 500e in its electric version costs twice as much as the gas version. Now, he didn't say that, but he's basically saying that. His warning on the cost of manufacturing electric cars, reported by UK magazine Autocar, came as he cautioned about the potential threat to automakers and their existing factories that make petrol, gasoline, or diesel cars. Now, before I get to that threat, my warning to Stellantis is this. If it really costs them 40% more to make an EV, versus a gasoline powered car, well, they are almost certain to be one of the next Kodaks, one of the next Nokias. Put them in that basket because they'll simply be disrupted. They will simply go out of business. It really is really simple. Stellantis has already announced a decision to idle a, or to basically close one of the biggest car factories it has in the United States. It's called the Belvedere factory in Illinois in the US where it builds the Jeep Cherokee and that factory will be shut down next month in February. So if you wanna see my video about that, I'll put a link in the description below. You can check that out. However, Carlos said that manufacturers must find a way to absorb the extra cost to make electric cars more affordable. Anywhere you introduce technology that is 40% more expensive than the previous one, you need to work hard in improving your business model through fixed and variable cost. There is no other option today other than absorbing the additional costs of electrification. 
So Carlos says there's no other option other than to absorb the costs. So what are Tesla and BYD doing? How are they making a profit if they're absorbing all these costs? Hard to understand that, especially when you consider the fact that BYD's cars are actually very affordable. He also said the post-pandemic recovery would increase competition among car makers, something already very visible in Europe, as well as putting more pressure on the price of EVs. And then he warned that the Chinese automakers are very dangerous and should be stopped. The European Union must stop them, otherwise they could potentially take over the European car market. You lose pricing power because you rebalance supply and demand. Then you need to work faster on reducing costs to protect your profit margins. If the average transaction price increases because of the electric vehicle sales mix, then you have the risk that the total market shrinks. That means some unpopular decisions will need to be made. If you start working on cost in this industry, you go from hero to zero in three years. Exactly. Hero to bankrupt in three years. That's possible for this car company. Now, yes, right now they make billions of dollars in profits, generally every quarter. That can change very fast. Like I said, have a look at Nokia's balance sheet. Have a look at Kodak's balance sheet. A similar thing happened to them. Disruption happens quickly. Now Stellantis would like to claim that right now they're doing really well because they're selling more EVs in Europe than Tesla is. But that's not actually technically true. I mean, if you want to include hybrids, then yeah, they're selling more EVs than Tesla, but I don't. I'm sorry for those of you who don't like that, but um, frankly, in my opinion, a hybrid is not an EV. It's carrying around something that burns gasoline and that will screw your lungs up, screw you up, give you cancer, maybe not necessarily tomorrow, Maybe not next year, maybe not the following year, but those, but apparently the emissions from gasoline and diesel engines are the number one pollutant in the atmosphere that causes cancer, or at least contributes to it. Sorry, but I don't put a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid in the fully electric vehicle conversation. Now, the other key point is here, the Stellantis are saying it costs them 40% more. They don't know what it costs everyone else. And for example, if they looked at Tesla and BYD, they'd realize that actually they're making a profit. How are they doing that? Well, clearly Stellantis doesn't know. They simply don't know. Therefore, they assume that everyone else is in the boat with them when the truth is that that's not the case. Now, as a result of this report and of CEO Carlos Tavares saying it costs 40% more to make an EV than a gas car, people are now saying that Tesla must be cooking the books. They're actually losing money on EVs. They're not making a profit at all. They're not making a profit at all. And actually, Tesla is just one giant scam. They're scamming us all, taking us for a ride and lying on their profits. Well, my friends, that could be the greatest scam in history. How they've managed to not go bankrupt, I have no idea. Now, getting back to the real world, the Fiat 500e in here in Australia costs $55,000. The gasoline powered version, the same model with the same features, is $27,000. Yes, Stellantis, it costs them a lot of money to make an EV. That doesn't mean it applies to everyone. In fact, the companies like BYD and Tesla, who embrace newer technologies or at least different options, such as lithium ion phosphate batteries in the future, sodium ion batteries, will be able to make EVs at a cheaper price than. Gasoline powered cars. In fact, many analysts and experts and even engineers are predicting that that will happen within the next three to four years. But it might have already happened. For example, in China, the price of the Wuling Hongwan Mini EV, which is a joint venture vehicle production between General Motors, SAIC, and Wuling, has just come down by $1,000. You're probably thinking, who cares, $1,000? But it's a big difference when you're talking about a car that used to cost $5,400 and now costs $4,400. Yes, it's a small vehicle, but clearly it's not that expensive to manufacture a car. Now that has a range of 300 kilometers in its higher spec variant. In the lower spec variant, it is 120 kilometers of range. But the point here is, it is possible to manufacture an EV and make a profit and be able to do it on a similar price level to gas right now. You have to make a lot of them, you've got to be efficient, and you've got to know what you're doing. My key question here is, does Stellantis know what they're doing? Well, that's my rhetorical question to all of you. You'll know what I think. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.